Many college students will tell you that when learning a new language, it can be very helpful to practice with a native speaker. Hi. Oops. That's wow. your name, buddy. That's just what this class at UVM is doing. Except that in this classroom, the native speakers have four legs and are covered in fur. You can't just expect a dog to sit when you tell them to sit. It's like speaking in a foreign language. The class is called Understanding and Speaking Dog. Students are learning how to communicate with dogs in order to train them. Most people have opinions, thoughts, philosophies about dog training, and what I teach is science. It's fun. Um, so remember, don't say the word. Jamie Shaw is a longtime dog trainer and adjunct instructor in the Department of Animal Science. She's teaching her students how to teach a dog to sit. It's not necessarily they understand the word, like sit means to actually sit down. It's, it's that they understand that's what you want from that, from that sound. So, so it's kind of, it's more like they understand that you want that rather than, oh, that's what that means. What we cover in the course is this, much of it is the exact same thing you would learn in a basic level psychology course. And it's about reinforcement and, you know, literally how does training work? How can you work with the brain to accept and process information? What's so the best way to do that? Is not fun. So, Shaw says um, that the key to success study, is to shape the dog's behavior like in a series of small steps with plenty of rewards speed. along the way. She recommends coming up with goals and developing a step-by-step -step training plan. The way that plan is implemented is called operant conditioning. Well, operant conditioning is a process where you choose a behavior that you would like a subject to know. So it could be with your roommate that you want to teach your roommate to pick up her dirty laundry instead of leaving it all over the house. Or it could be you want to teach your dog to sit when you ask it to sit instead of having it jump on visitors when they come to the house. You can't just take a dog and put it in the position that you want it to be in. Like if you're teaching a sit, you can't just take it and physically put it into a sit and do that a bunch of times and expect it to learn it as well. So what shaping is, is successive approximation. You're taking little baby steps towards the behavior so every time it like puts its butt down a little bit more, you reward that and you use luring, you have like a treat and you put it, kind of put it into the position that you want by making it want to be in that position with the treat in your hand. A double major in animal science and psychology, Katie Hayden is interested in dog training as a career. She's been practicing what she's learning at the local dog daycare where she works. One of the things that I really have loved in like the past six months or so that I've been like working with dogs professionally is I really love just seeing the improvement that they make and that is kind of what drives me on and so it's not so much, I mean it, it's a little surprising to see how much they can learn in such a short amount of time but it's really that's what I love to see, and that's what makes me love training dogs. What you need to do to get a dog that doesn't know how to sit or stand or whatever to do it. And Jamie especially it makes it look so easy. Her dogs are so well trained, so the, some of the ones that she brings in, no problem, will just sit on command, they'll just drop, lay down on the floor, and she makes it look so easy. And as we're learning tonight, it's a lot more difficult than it is, and it looks. Shaw brings dogs to class throughout the semester in order to demonstrate certain habits and techniques. Most of the canine guest lecturers here this day are untrained rescue dogs from Random Rescue in Williamstown. At first, like, I didn't realize how many steps you really have to do it. If you want them to do like a harder step, you have to like break it up into really, really small steps. Like if it's like a complicated trick, like how little, how small the steps are, in order to reach it and how like if you if they're not getting it you have to change the whole plan or if they are getting it you don't want to do too much you might get excited that they're getting it you want to keep going but you have to like stop and just let them take a break and pick it up again and just the repetition of it doing the same trick over and over and over again until they master it 
Good boy. And I back up when I train this because it makes the dogs run a little bit faster to you, makes it more fun. Teaching dogs some new tricks and learning some themselves, these UBM students are on their way to being fluent in the language of dog. In Burlington, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence.